Good morning everyone, welcome to another video, I'm Maz and today I'm in Newport, South Wales. And in today's video, I'll be looking at this Jaguar XES. A huge thank you to TMR Cars for this opportunity. Now, this is not a full review on the Jaguar XE. For that, you'll have to click on the link down below. This is more to look at the XES in particular. As always, a quick overview. The Jaguar XE was launched in 2015 as a long-awaited replacement for the X-Type. But this is the... XES, which is the highest in their range, excluding the Limited Run Project 8. The XES has 380 horsepower, coming from a 3-litre supercharged V6 found on the F-Type, and was only in production from 2015 to 2017. From 17 onwards in North America, it was replaced by the 35T, but here in Britain, it was replaced by the 300 Sport. Both are actually slower than this. Of course, let's have a look around. This is a Jaguar XES, so it's based on the pre-facelift model, um, which has, of course, the bi-xenon headlights with the LED daytime running light underneath, known as the J-Blade. The indicators are actually halogen, so if we unlock the car. So we saw the halogen hazards flash and the LED DRL turn on. And here is the by Xenon light. And styling wise, it's almost exactly like an R Sport. The only giveaway besides the badge is this intake here. So an R Sport will have a slat here and this will be color coded. Personally, I prefer this style more. It, it's only a tiny detail, but it makes the car look a lot beefier. And there's a car locking itself. Coming around to the side, you get these bespoke XES wheels, which then went on to the P300 on the facelift. Um, this one does not have the black pack, so it has the silver blade-like side vent. Um, the XES also came with these red calipers, and this particular one has the Jaguar branded valve stem caps. Coming around to the side, nothing much to talk about other than the gloss black section on the side skirt this particular car has keyless entry so that's how you unlock and lock the car again not a great deal different to the pre-facelift besides the tail lights um, so on the facelift it sort of goes into a chicane here it sort of resembles an audi a4 but a giveaway is that if we unlock the car again you have this semicircle here, which not only links it to the F-Type, but also to the Series 1 E-Type. Uh, this particular XES has an aftermarket exhaust system, and on the S models, the lower valance is gloss black, whereas on R Sports, they are basically not coloured at all, which is what uh, motivated me to gloss black my lower valance on my old XF. And of course, the obligatory lip spoiler on the back. And let's open the boot. This particular one has the power tailgate. And this particular one also has the 12 volt socket. Same 455 mil boot you get on the regular car. And it can also lock from the key. Alternatively, there's a button on the boot as well. Before we step inside, um, I just want to quickly show you these S kick plates. Again, bespoke to the S model. Though personally, I prefer the illuminated options that say Jaguar on them. Of course, this car has the red and black interior, which I wish my old XF had and my current F-Type. Now coming inside, um, from first impressions, this car has fully electric seats. On some entry level Jaguars, it's just the seat backs that are electric and you otherwise have to pull something down here. Um, again, I think it's thanks to the color that this interior looks really, really nice. Um, on the S models, you get the 
well, the assemble them embossed onto the headrests. And if I just move over, so this part of the seat is red and this part is black and the armrest is also red. Now on non-S models, this is actually the other way round. So on a two litre, if you want red interior, this will be black and this will be red. And this is my point of view. The steering wheel is exactly the same as my old XF. Uh, basically the same as every other Jaguar at this time period, bar the F-Type. I still think a gloss black surround here would finish it off very well. Um, on the XC, just like the XF, you get the Reva hoop. On this one, you get Meridian sound system. This being a pre-facelift, the doors are completely different to the facelift. On the facelift, you get a grab handle here, but on this, you get a very tiny door pocket and not much padding on on this part of the armrest. And of course, you've got the older style window switches. Coming down here, you do get alloy pedals. This particular car has manually operated steering adjustment. So you twist it once to change reach, and then you twist it again for rake. That's roughly my comfort position. Unfortunately, this one does not come with a heated steering wheel. Um, this one has the plastic black paddles. This being a very early one, you get very squared off uh, fonts and the center screen is very, very pixelated. And of course the infotainment is almost exactly like on my old XF and on that F-Type that I drove in the Forest of Dean, so I'm not really gonna talk too much about it, but judging by the age of this vehicle, if I go on SatNav and type in, I don't know, Hull, That's just radio static, so there we go, no more static. Audio off, thank you for that. H, U, L, L, search. Yep, they haven't updated their counties. Apparently Hull is in a place called North Humberside, as opposed to East Yorkshire. And of course you saw how laggy the system is. And this particular one ha has the smaller screen, the larger one, covers the entirety of this bezel. And because there's a power button here, that means there's no reversing camera. Shame. Coming down, it's almost exactly like on the pre-facelift X260. The only difference is that the cup holders are exposed. And is there anything in here? Um, you do get a 12 volt socket, but this one uses an F-type style cover. And Jaguar being part of Land Rover, there's your, this is the button you press if you're on very dodgy surfaces like mud. And again, the drive mode selector is here, so if I turn this into dynamic, the dials glow red. And while we're here, let's see what's on here. Look how pixelated that central screen is. There's no fancy images. And by the looks of it, you can't really choose what you want as your screensaver like you can on the 2017 mini facelift. So yeah, that's your screen, whether you like it or not. One thing I forgot to mention, there is some, there is some stitching here. And while this does sort of feel like leather, I'm guessing this is a very, very thin um, pebble leather texture. Um, it's nowhere near as nice as what you get on the F-Type. Oh, and yes, the overhead console. This is where you keep your sunglasses. And this is in the Morzine or Morzine um, headliner and no sunroof. Oh, and one last thing, there's the supercharged V6 as seen on the V6 F-Type. Okay, so that's the exterior and interior done now. So let's see how this car drives. That's the seatbelt. Okay. Yep, it's got the rotary dial. There we go. And let's make our way over. Once again, from everyday driving, it's not a great deal different uh, to the standard XE. And of course, the one I drove in Melksham 
was an early model. So all XESs came with the 8-speed ZF torque converter. Since we're here, let's quickly pull up, give this engine a rev. So That sounds really nice. Does it make a difference in dynamic mode? That's a really nice sound. So let's make our way back to the test drive. But yeah, besides the sound, it drives just like the XC that I drove in Melksham. Um, it's not a complaint. So it, so it drives very well. Um, I forgot to mention, the benchmark of this car would be the AMG C43. And compared to the C43, um, the pre-facelift had 367. This has 380, so it's up on power. Uh, the, the AMG is... Well, with the facelift being 300 and... 90, but this being a 2015 car with 380, um, it has more power than the it has more power than the equivalent C43. But I do think the C43 has a better soundtrack, and well, the general cabin I think is better on the C43, just because the original C-Class has a nicer interior than the original XE in general. But the steering, I'd say, feels nicer than on the C43. Um, on the C43, the steering felt a bit too light. But on this, there's a lot more weight and a lot more reassurance on turning the car. But overall, from a driving perspective, I think this one is nicer than the C43. If only Jaguar made a facelift version of this car, I think this would be the uh, complete package. Um, because it has a much nicer interior than on this early car. Uh, let's put this into sport. Dynamic. See, see how it does on manual mode. There's a lot of exhaust sound. But the supercharger does not come until after 5,000 revs. So it's definitely a soundtrack. The pull is really, really nice. Compared to the F-Type, I think... I think they're closely matched. Of course, the XC has the back seats and the boot. Um, the back seats and the boot, again, are actually the weak point for the XC when compared to its uh, rivals but compared to the F-Type it's still a big upgrade uh, which one's more fun this or the C43 in terms of these kinds of driving I think the C43 wins due to its formatic and general more driving confidence but if I had more confidence and I was you know Getting the tail out, I think this one would be more fun. Ooh, motor point. And of course the sat nav, it's absolutely disastrously laggy. We're on a dual carriageway now. Oh, traffic. Uh, let's just drop back, put it back into dynamic mode and I can do that all day. But when I put it back into normal mode, it's uh, absolutely civilized. A built up area, let's see how this car drives on the built up area. Um, the sound, I can hear it, but it's not 
too intrusive because I've been to so many car shows and sometimes those cars absolutely rattle. Um, well, here we are in a residential zone. Again, a car like this should do well in this sort of roads as well. Currently doing 20 and the revs are holding at 1,000 revs. Absolutely effortless. All I get is a little bit of wind noise and tyre roar, but not at all intrusive. Maneuverability is actually quite good around these tight roads. A few undulations, but they weren't crashy. Let's see what it's like on the speed bumps. Yeah, that wasn't too bad at all. Let's try another one. Compared to the standard XE, I think this is doing very well. Bearing in mind this is supposed to be the fast one. Let's do a three point turn in the road. This does have parking sensors at the rear. Does it have it on the front? Don't think so. Just the rears on this car. But three point turn is fine. Uh, visibility from the back window is absolutely atrocious. And this particular car does not have the reversing camera. But that being said, overall this car is brilliant. Uh, would I take it over a C43? Uh, I definitely take it over the pre-facelift C43. Uh, I just don't think that car was special enough over the standard C-Class. But the facelift C43, I can't really compare that because it was launched when the S wasn't in production. So yes, let's take this back to the compound and finalize this video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, review this Jaguar XES. Huge thank you to TMR Newport. Uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you are new, ring the bell to stay up to speed, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.